Hey everybody, Jeremy Goodrich from Shine Insurance here. An epic freeze just came across our country recently, affecting almost the entire United States. And one thing that happens when we have major low temperatures is burst pipes inside of properties. These can cause a ton of mess, and this video is all about helping you to fix that. So here we go. We're gonna talk about really the, the 10 steps you need to take. And number one is simple, right? You've got warring, water pouring out of the ceiling in your house, or a property that you own, you need to turn off the main water valve. One of the biggest things you can get out of this video is this next little bit, right? Where is the main water valve in your house or your properties? You don't want to be thinking about that when water is pouring out of the ceiling. Obviously, you want to know right where it is, be able to go to that, turn it off, and stop the water pouring out of your house, right? Okay, so we've stopped the water. That's a good thing. We also want to turn on all the faucets because we still have water in the system that could potentially add more to the water coming out of those pipes. So it's a simple thing, but make sure all of the remaining water is, is let out by turning on the faucets inside of your house. All right, so we've dealt with that part. There's an incredibly important thing we need to think about and a lot of people don't. And that is, is there any part of this water situation that has affected the electrical inside your house? As you probably know, water and electrical do not mix. And if we have water going down the walls where there's outlets or switches and that water has, a, you know, touched the, uh, the power, we could have some serious, even deadly uh, outcomes from that. So if you don't know, it's a good idea to turn off the electrical until you're really sure that there's no water in engagement with the electrical side of your house. Um, that's right. So the next thing we want to do is contact a remediation company. So especially if you have major damage, there are people out there and it's called remediation companies and their job is to deal with water and fire damage. If you have a fire in your house, if you have a flood in your house, they come in and help address these things. They are water damage professionals. And so we want to bring them in, especially in big situations. Sure, you can deal with smaller situations on your own, and this video will help you think about what you need to do for that, but bringing in remediation folks is a key piece of the whole picture. We also need to contact a plumber, right? You have a burst pipe, you may not even know where that burst pipe is. Maybe you do, but you wanna have someone who's a professional come in and fix the burst pipe. Ultimately, we have two jobs to do here. One is to fix the pipes that have been broken, and two is to clean up the mess that those broken pipes caused. So the plumber is going to be the fix the pipes that are broken, and the remediation company is going to be the one that cleans up the mess. Now, there's one more factor, probably one you've already thought of, and that is your insurance company. So they have to do with the money, right? So the insurance company isn't gonna come out and fix the pipe. The insurance company isn't gonna come out and clean up the water damage. The insurance company will likely play a role in the financial picture to pay those remediation companies, to pay that plumber, to pay the contractors who may need to rebuild your kitchen if there's water flowing through the floor, the floor of your kitchen. Hopefully there isn't, but if there is, you know, there may be a lot to be done. I've seen water damage claims cost 500 bucks. I've seen water damage claims cost $500,000. And so obviously insurance is going to be a factor there. Now, when you contact your insurance company, you need to ask for a couple of things. The first one is the claim number. This is so uh, when you contact the company with questions you have throughout the process, you can let them know exactly what claim you're talking about. The second one is the adjuster contact information. An adjuster is a person who works for the insurance company who's going to walk through the claim with you, ultimately will be cutting checks um, and, and going through all that process with you. So you wanna know who that person is. You want to know how to be able to contact them. If you can avoid it, you don't wanna have to call an 800 number every time you have a question about what's going on with the claim. Now with some insurance companies, that will be your only option, but if you can get an individual, someone's phone number, their cell phone number, you can text them even with some insurance companies. Um, you want to be able to have that contact information. You need timeline for next steps. One of your key roles in this situation is to make sure the people involved are doing what they said they do 
when they said they'd do it. And you want to start that right from the beginning. Okay, uh, when are you going to come out? When are you going to, you know, how long is the process going to take? How am I going to know how to get things done? So you want to ask for timelines of next steps. That's true for your remediation folks, your plumbers, and your insurance individuals in that process. And then finally, your deductible. A deductible is the amount of money you have to pay out of pocket before your insurance company gets involved. I just got a call with someone uh, who had no damage. They had burst pipes, just like we're talking about right now, but they had no real damage to their house. They caught it right away. It was in the crawl space, not really a whole lot of water damage there. They had a plumbing bill of about 300 bucks, but they had an, a deductible of $1,000. So in that scenario, it's unlikely that insurance would become involved because the, the cost of damage was less than their $1,000 deductible. Let's say, though, that your water damage situation, after you have remediation come out, maybe have to do a little contracting to cut out some drywall that got wet and put that back in, maybe you've got $7,000 of damage but you have a $1,000 deductible. Well, then your insurance company should, all, all said and done, pay about $6,000 and you pay $1,000. So you want to know from the very beginning what your deductible is so you can make decisions about that stuff. Okay, now you've contacted all the right people. You've turned off the water. You've turned off the power potentially. Now it's time to start cleaning up the obvious damage. Now, if you have remediation folks coming right now, they may be able to start right away. But oftentimes, especially in burst pipe scenarios, there are lots of people calling these remediation companies at the same time. And so you're left with big puddles everywhere. And we certainly don't want to leave that standing, right? If we can clean up standing water, if that means going to a local grocery store or um, an equipment company and renting a water thing or a uh, you know, wet dry vac, whatever you need to do to start bringing water off the floors, it's a good idea to do so. If you are able to safely turn on power, you should probably turn on some fans as well. You can turn up the heat, making your house a little bit warmer is certainly going to help to uh, get rid of some of the standing water and potentially even navigate some of the water uh, that could be in walls or places that you can't get to as quickly. So that's it, right? One uh, Number eight is to take moisture seriously because uh, hidden moisture turns into mold and mold is something you do not want to have to deal with from health standpoint, from a smell standpoint, from a problem standpoint. Mold is much worse than dealing with water damage right at the beginning when it has not yet created mold. So number eight is really taking moisture seriously. Number nine I talked about a second ago. It's keeping all parties on schedule. Look, you've got to keep the remediation, the contracting, and the insurance in line, knowing what the next steps, knowing what they're doing. If you have major damage, this could take months. It could take up to a year if you have really significant damage, right? We're having to reconstruct parts of your home if we're having to take out cabinets and stuff like that. So uh, what you want to hear from all of your participants is what the next step is and when that step should be completed. And then you make a note to yourself, and when you get to that point, if it's not completed, you check in with them and say, hey, you said it would be completed at this point. Why isn't it completed at this point? When is the next waypoint? We want to be kind to everyone because we don't want to create a scenario where they don't want to get things done for you, but we want to be on top of it as well, and they know that if they don't hit a goal, that they're going to have to talk with you about it. So that is number nine. Now, I went through everything really quickly, so number 10 is a step-by-step -step guide that we created that I feel really proud of. It really digs into the claim process and exactly how it works in detail, when checks should get cut, why checks are the way they are, what you should expect from all different things. So number 10 is definitely downloading our step-by-step -step guide. We'll put a link here right at the end. There's also a link in the show notes to download that. It's absolutely free. Uh, it's just something to help you go through claims. So that is it, our 10 steps to navigating a burst pipe. I really hope this helps you get through the situation. Burst, bur burst pipes are one of the worst things because you can't see where all the damage is so often. So you just have to take it step-by-step. -step. Trust those remediation companies to really come in and get you taken care of and stay on top of everything and obviously download the guide. If you want to watch a video about that guide, I break down the guide for you. Uh, click the link right here. All right, until the next time, it's been a pleasure and have a wonderful day.